consumer experiences, major disruptors, and AI tech are shaping healthcare for years to come. On Hello Healthcare, we dive deep on those issues with leaders who are driving change. I'm Chris Hemphill, your host of Hello Healthcare, and we hope that these stories will help you to create or demand a better future in healthcare. Hello, healthcare. I'm joined by Dr. Aaron Neinstein of UCSF. Sure. Hi. And uh, Sarah Sanders, who is uh, UCSF's Chief Marketing and Brand Experience Officer. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Happy to be here. Aaron, a little bit of different side of the house, focusing on digital health and innovation, and uh, Sarah on marketing and the brand experience. This is an example. Hey, other organizations, you might be in a scenario where you don't feel like the technology side of the house or other areas of the house are apt to listening to the types of innovations you want to focus on in marketing. So we're going to dig deep into the the listening that it takes between these teams, understanding kind of at an operational level. I can say break down the silos and that, that sounds all well and good. What does it look like? Well, it's right here. So just to kick us off, when it comes to building these cross-functional teams, I'm just curious about thoughts and motivations. What's led to this thinking that, that y'all are uh, driving down that? Did, did some of my points ring true? Yeah, absolutely. I think traditionally marketing has really led the beginning of the patient journey. So in terms of going out and finding patients and bringing them into the organization, the lead gen piece, you Mm -hmm. know, we've done that for 15 years. Uh, Used digital to do that. That was really where I think it was introduced a lot. The marketing tech stack was really put into place for that lead gen. The pandemic changed things, you know, the world has evolved and there's digital is everything now. And so now we're really looking at how to deliver healthcare digitally as a part of the core part of how we you know, practice. And I think it's an opportunity for marketers because we've always sort of gotten so far, but then had to hand it over to the clinical team or the operations team to take that lead or to take that patient and then bring them along in their journey. And I think what's happening now at UCSF is we've created this operating model where we have lots of different disciplines working on customer issues is that we're now bringing to bear all the talents of the marketing team, the clinical team, the operations team, our innovation team, data scientists, designers, experienced designers, et cetera, to really come up with solutions that like none of us would have thought of. And we're all at the table for the entire journey. And so I think that's really what the difference is for us. And the reason we did it was because we're creating an entire digital experience, not just these silos of experiences. And I think really seeking to create a better interaction with our customers. We're an academic medical center. They're traditionally hard to interact with. (laughs) We don't make it easy because of our multiple missions and the complexity of our both our patients and, and the care that we provide. And so there's, it's just ripe for innovation and ripe for evolution, really. And so we're having a good time. Yeah, we are. So I, it was a very natural partnership, I think, as we at UCSF as a complex care organization, as Sarah was talking about, you know, we really were focused on two main parts of our patient journey. So how do people who are new diagnosis of cancer need a transplant just diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, some complex medical condition, they're being referred for care or they're seeking a second opinion. What's the experience of that person who's dealing with that difficult point in their life and looking for care? And then once people are are getting care from us, how do we engage them in a way? So I'm an endocrinologist, so you know my background is in diabetes care. How do we keep them engaged throughout their entire care experience so that it's not just the 20 minutes in the office visit, but that we're delivering educational content, we're Uh, allowing the patient to connect with us throughout their entire care journey. And as we were doing that, and as we were starting to develop digital thinking within the organization, the the really natural fit is marketing. Because if you look at who for the longest time has been thinking about the customer experience, who has been developing the, you know, the digital technology stack to develop insights, you know, using terms voice of the customer, who's been using CRM technology for the longest, it's all coming out of the marketing department. 
the way you phrase that is probably making somebody's heart warm right now. <laughs> because it, it's making my heart warm. <laughs> all too often, people look at the marketing part of the organization as construct this billboard or do this task, make this uh, make this design pretty. But Jim Blazer over at Hackensack Meridian, who's the chief strategy officer, he said, we want to look at marketers as strategists because of the types of experiences and not just the fact that they have a, a know-how around the CRM systems and the intro of the patient journey, but because that's what they empathize with and, and live and breathe every day. So just wanted to pause and, and just emphasize that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about what marketing professionals are great at is understanding our patients' needs and knowing when and how to reach out to them and building analytics around that to continually improve it. And that shouldn't be applied just to lead generation in the front end of someone's experience with healthcare. That's what healthcare needs throughout the healthcare journey. I mean, anybody who's you know, dealt with a chronic medical condition, taking care of a, a child or a, a parent with a chronic medical condition knows that you need that intelligence that you know, reaches out to you, helps you along your path. If you, you know, know that you need to go get some lab tests done or you know, go get a CT scan and then check back in with your doctor and then decide what therapy to take, those pathways and those journeys we can build intelligence around that. And that's what people who are in marketing know how to do. So I think it opens up a whole new world of opportunity. Mm-hmm. So one, one thing that I want to tease out for marketers to communicate to technologists, they have to understand their perspective and uh, where they're coming from too. So I thought it would be a really interesting way to tease it out. If, if I were to ask by working more closely with marketing, what have you learned? So some of the biggest learnings for me is the technologies that are out there in terms of tracking a patient throughout their journey. So the ability to see what's happening to someone all throughout every touch point that they have with us and track them throughout that process and use that to learn where they're experiencing friction. So is someone coming to our website and they're leaving? Are they coming to our website and they're looking to see what our appointment availability is and then they leave? Or are they going all the way through to scheduling an appointment? And the, the ability to have robust analytics behind that and really use it to, to surface those insights that, that really help you see and feel what, what a patient is seeing and feeling. I think that to me, that has been one of the, the biggest learnings. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. That, that means marketers, the stuff that you're living and breathing every day that just might seem like an every, uh, everyday nuance, don't take that knowledge for granted, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's it's always been a great partnership with our clinical partners to understand the needs of the patients and consumers. But I think marketers have an insight into maybe before they're even patients, what, you know, that that part of it, like what are they searching for? What are their caregivers? How, how What are their needs? So I think they think about it maybe a little bit, I wouldn't say broader, but maybe from a different perspective than, than maybe has traditionally been done in healthcare. And then when you combine all that together, you have just such a, you know, we call it the 360 view of the patient. And I think it's it's significant, it's real, because I think with all of the insights that we can glean both from our internal data and our external data and experiential behavioral data by just watching what they do with us, you know, you really do have this opportunity to create a scalable, personalized, automatic experience Mm -hmm. that, you know, can actually get people help when and how they need it based on their own personal needs and preferences. And that's what I aspire to. I think that's like the coolest potential outcome of the work that we do. That's really, healthcare is so hard, you mm-hmm. know? It's so it's such an emotional journey, so hard to navigate. If we can just make it easier on people, particularly in the complex arena that we deal in. I went into marketing because my mother's a nurse. Mm-hmm. And uh, sort of grew up sort of going to, she's a nurse practitioner and worked with her, you know, in her practice on occasion. And just admired her dedication to the patients, but I knew I was too squirmy for like (laughs) any of the direct clinical care. But I always felt like healthcare marketing was different from other kind of marketing. Like you're definitely having an impact on patients. I mean, we're educators. We're, we have, I I just, a higher calling than you might think about when you traditionally think of marketing and growth strategies and things like that. I think we're just trying to help people get where they need to go and do it with the least possible 
are the most possible fulfillment in that experience. That's an excellent way to look at it because you looked at your mother as a, a caregiver and you thought about where your role in that uh, delivery process is. We can debate about this, but I would argue that because of the involvement in educating people about what services are available, and especially when you get into using that 360 experience, using data that you have to identify where certain needs are, that puts marketing in the care delivery process in a, mm-hmm. in a certain way. Mm-hmm. I see that as directly the opportunity, right? I mean, again, so let's you know think of somebody who you know who's gone through their cancer journey and it's an endless array of chemotherapy tra- treatments and infusions of lab tests, of PET scans, and people end up needing to be their own care navigator and their own mm-hmm. advocate. And as doctors, we're terrified also that people are gonna fall through the cracks, that you're gonna order it. Just because you order the PET scan, to be done at three months and six months. There's we rarely have the systems that really help the person get there and make sure that that those tests happen at, at the right times. I view it as a huge opportunity to make sure that people don't fall through the cracks and to know that yes, you should have a PET scan at three months and six months, and then your infusions are at you know one, two, and four months, and to make sure we help you schedule those come to those, get educated before and after, make sure that you're connected with your doctor and your care team at the appropriate time. I think that's a huge opportunity. It's a relief on the provider side. Like how do, how do you think about a provider and the heavy weight that they carry? You know what I mean? How do we make their day easier so mm-hmm. they can really add what they need to for the, the thing that they can only do with their patients? It's not just about the patient experience. It's, you know, our providers, especially after the last couple, are burnt out. Like, they are overburdened. (laughs) It's hard to be a a physician or a a nurse in this day and age. And so, again, that's another part of just that, you know, trying to help. I think we can help the providers just make their days a little easier. Make If we can help educate their patients in a way that's streamlined and supportive of the, you know, the customized advice that they get through their physician, I think that that, and that helps both sides of the equation. It's, it's designing a better system so that everybody feels supported and educated. Hello Healthcare is brought to you by Actium Health. Healthcare leaders use Actium's CRM intelligence to drive patient volume by activating patients and driving meaningful engagement. Our AI-driven solution makes patient outreach simple and easy by identifying and predicting patient needs. Learn more at actiumhealth.com. And now, back to the show. On both sides of this conversation, I have to say I'm I'm personally just impressed by the empathy for for each other's roles and the understanding of where each other fits in, in the whole care journey. For the people that want that 360 experience but feel like they're going at it alone, like if you're on the marketing side but there's not communication I'm wondering if if we can get kind of into maybe an example or just specific of what the cross-functional world looks like, what these cross-functional teams and relationships look like, just as examples that, hey, we can call up our bosses and say, hey, there's a better way. Yeah, maybe we could get an example. But I think to start out with, I think what makes our organization special is that this was from the top, like this was a commitment of our leadership, a commitment of resources and a commitment to create, or at least try a different way. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? I've been on the marketing side when you're trying to do that and you just hit one barrier after another. Nobody sees it as being the place of a marketer to get further down that that journey. So I think it does start at the top. Mm -hmm. It takes a commitment from the organization. I think in our instance, I think it was about hoping to create an experience that you know, leapfrogged <laughs> others in our industry and, you know, competition and, and really for the purpose of some people do this for growth. Some people do it for a population health strategy. You know, they put all this infrastructure into place. And UCSF, I'm just giving a plug. I've only been there six months, but I'm, <laughs> I'm already enamored. It really is a place where people want to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And so customer experience is the reason we're doing this. We want to create a better experience for a customer. And we have a ways to go, so there's opportunity there. But I think it's so important that you get leadership buy-in. And I don't know how you do it without that, you know? I think you you do kind of have to get in there and probably find, you know, a supporter, somebody who 
maybe individually find a physician who believes that this is the right way to go and maybe pilot and experiment and show a, a model that works. I guess that would be the advice I would take for somebody who doesn't have the kind of infrastructure already in place. I mean, I can so agree completely with everything Sarah said. And I, so two examples that come to mind where we really sort of felt the power of the cross-functional model. So mm-hmm. one is, is Sarah and I are part of a customer team that's really looking holistically at our customer experience for UCSF and membership of that team includes design and Sarah for marketing. We have our patient experience director. We have one of our chief operating officers. So an operations individual there, we have a data and engineering representative on that team. And I think one of the insights we're starting to see is as we try to develop voice of the customer data from around the institution that that has traditionally lived in siloed areas. So the experience team gets our press gainy surveys and our cap surveys. And marketing has been responsible for our star ratings and our patient reviews on the web. And being together on this team, we are starting to look at how do we actually bring all of that data together to serve the needs that we have as an institution and move those data out of their historical silos. That's one place I feel like we're really starting to see the potential value. Another example that comes to mind is the the work the teams have done around the head and neck surgery campaign. So as as Sarah was talking about, we did stand up new patient self-scheduling, so self-initiated from the web. These are not referred individuals to our head and neck cancer practice. We built a cross-functional team around that. So similar makeup, marketing, operations, engineering, design, product management, data science. And that team was looking at the experience for somebody shopping for care or seeking care from the web. And they were able to build not just the scheduling part, but because it was a cross-functional team, they also built the analytics underlying everything. They, They instrumented the entire process from web all the way through to scheduling And they built the the campaigns using Salesforce and Marketing Cloud. We now are able to, from end to end, go all the way from advertising and campaign to scheduling and to the appointment and actually measure the whole thing. Mm. And what is also really exciting and powerful about the model is it wasn't just a team coming together to do that as a project, but that team is staying focused on that area of what we're calling the prospect patient experience. And so that team will continue to make that model better and to improve that the process and the, and the patient journey over time. So they don't just disappear and go back to some other day job. We know that that experience is important for UCSF in perpetuity. And so we will continue to have that team improve it iteratively through the, through the learnings that they gather. Wow. So when you're naming all these different people that are coming together, different organizations, context, background, languages. What about disagreements and dissonance from folks that come, what folks all come together under this? Could you talk about some things that you've seen and how that's overcome, how you iron through these t- t- uh, types of scenarios? Yeah, we could talk, we could talk, you could go I, first. I, I, can, I, can, I can start. Uh, I think one area where we probably could have done a better job also is in role clarity at the beginning of forming these cross-functional teams. Because what has happened historically is decision-making and project work happens to the org chart. And so people are familiar with their own teams. It's the people they work with all the time. When you pull people out of that context, as, as you were alluding to, Chris, and you take someone from the design team and you take someone from data science team and you take someone from marketing and you put them together in a team and say, now you're focused on the experience of a prospective patient who's looking for care at UCSF they're not used to working together. They don't necessarily know what each other's expertise are or what they do. And so spending time actually clarifying, this is the role of a product manager. This is the role of a designer. This is the role of marketing. This is the role of data science. I think we could have done a better job at that internally. And we're, we're you know, this was our first version of putting forward cross-functional teams and we're going to iterate and improve our model. So I think That's one area. I think another is the decision-making process. And again, same thing. People are used to decision-making happening through the org chart hierarchy. We're trying to move more decision-making authority into those teams and allowing them to make more decisions. And and that requires a lot, as Sarah was talking about, leadership buy-in to kind of nudge teams to 
be the ones to make those decisions and empower them to make those decisions. And when they start looking around at, oh, I'm the one who gets to make that decision, Mm -hmm. encouraging them to do it. Yeah. I think it's also like I play the role of both a functional leader and then a leader within our digital patient experience, which is our cross-functional team environment. And it's been really helpful because I guess I get the the um, perspective of being a functional leader because not all of our functional leaders are in our cross-functional <laughs> teams. And so that is that's hard for somebody to get their head around, I think, to see what they can what normal course of business keep going on what your functional accountabilities are. What's the kind of work that gets done in this cross-functional innovation environment? And I think we still feel like have folks, because we're early on in this, really struggle with, you know, these aren't competitive with each other. They're actually complementary. And we're not replacing any foundational systems. We're, We're hoping to accelerate the foundational systems and then experiment, you know, with patient journeys and experiences within the context of those systems. So it makes it complicated sometimes. <laughs> but I think that's some of the dissonance. I think we're still getting over getting people to understand what the roles are and really what they aren't. You know, we're mm. it's so it's a work in process and we'll we're continue to kind of communicate. I mean you just have to overly communicate. I think that's the core of it. Like tell your narrative, tell your stories, tell your successes, but a lot of communication. Mm-hmm. And I think building trust on the team also. Mm-hmm. I, I noticed like even at our at our customer team that Sarah and I have been part of for mm-hmm. maybe about six months now, I think early on we weren't quite sure what each other's boundaries were. And so, you know, again, you're bringing together people who come from all these different contexts. And I think we were sort of like nervous to step mm-hmm. on each other's toes. And I think we've built up trust over time. Mm-hmm. And so the ability to just be candid with each other and say like, okay, do you, do you have that? Or do I have that? Or is this you know, something you want to take on? Is that something you want me to take on? I think just building trust in that cross-functional environment mm-hmm. becomes so valuable. Um, so I, I, it takes time mm-hmm. and, and you have to really be committed to the process because I think there have probably been a million times along the way where we could have said, uh, you know, this is, this is a lot of effort. There's a lot of time we're putting into this. Maybe it's not worth it, but I think we all see the bigger opportunity and the vision. And so we're, we're committed to, to really working through all those challenges. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm really thankful that you came and laid out what this, this cross-functional relationship looks like, knowing that that top-down effort is required. Hopefully, the examples that you share will get leaders to think from that perspective. And, and if someone isn't from that top of line angle, you know, at the manager, director level, level, et cetera, but want to get the attention, hopefully by sharing your examples, that can start getting people to uh, start thinking in that direction. Mm-hmm. Great. We hope so. We hope our yeah. stories help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, again, uh, appreciate you very much. And real quick, just the best way for people to be able to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about uh, about these stories. Oh, sure. Uh, we have very easy emails. It's Sarah with an H, Sanders, S-A-N-D-E-R-S, at ucsf.edu. And same, uh, it's uh, Aaron.Neinstein at ucsf.edu. Also on Twitter, at Aaron Neinstein uh, is another good way to catch me. Thanks again for tuning into Hello Healthcare. If you like what you heard, we appreciate a review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. You and your feedback fuel us. This conversation is brought to you by Actium Health. To get the latest on what these healthcare leaders are saying, find us at hellohealthcare.com and subscribe. Thank you. And when we see you next time, hello. Hello.